So friends, let's take on three quick stories. One, Peter Navarro headed to prison. Two, Donald Trump defames E. Jean Carroll again right after he's made to put up a $90 million bond for defaming her previously. And three, no one but no one loses at the Oscars like Donald Trump loses. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, lots of breaking legal news. Let's try to tackle three stories. The first involving Mr. Green Bay Sweep himself, Peter Navarro, a former top advisor to then President Donald Trump. You remember Navarro. He was the one who gave the January 6th coup attempt a cute name, the Green Bay Sweep, thinking that what, that might distract people from the unlawful nature of what they were doing? Of course, the Green Bay sweep was a famous power play that was run by the Green Bay Packers when they were coached by Vince Lombardi. Well, Peter Navarro is about to be Green Bay swept right into prison. Here is the new reporting, this from Politico. Headline, Peter Navarro ordered to prison on March 19th. Former Trump White House aide Peter Navarro has been ordered to report to a Miami prison on March 19th to begin serving a four-month sentence for defying a subpoena from the January 6th Select Committee. Navarro, who is urging a federal appeals court to stay or pause the sentence while he attempts to overturn his conviction, faces the prospect of becoming the first top advisor to Donald Trump to serve jail time for an offense related to the effort to subvert the 2020 election. Navarro, 74, was convicted last year on two counts of contempt of Congress for refusing to provide documents and testimony to congressional investigators probing the root causes of the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The committee subpoenaed Navarro in February 2022, and he quickly indicated he would refuse to comply, citing executive privilege. The House held Navarro in contempt two months later, and the Justice Department soon followed suit with criminal charges. Navarro, an economist who advised Trump on trade issues, was the second former Trump aide convicted for refusing to cooperate with the January 6th panel. Steve Bannon was convicted by a jury in July 2022 for similarly blowing off a subpoena from the committee. However, the judge in Bannon's case, U.S. District Judge Carl Nichols, a Trump appointee, agreed not to enforce Bannon's four-month sentence while he appeals his conviction to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Navarro's judge, U.S. District Judge Amit Mehta, not a Trump appointee, rejected Navarro's attempt for a similar stay, and Navarro is now asking a three-judge appeals court panel to stave off imminent jail time. Dr. Navarro, I think they misspelled defendant there. It's my editorial edition. Defendant Navarro has now been ordered to report to the custody of the Bureau of Prisons, FCI Miami, on or before 2 p.m. on March 19, 2024, his attorney revealed in court papers late Sunday. Okay, friends, two quick points about this Navarro development. One, what a difference a judge makes. Two men, Bannon and Navarro, who committed identical crimes. Each one blew off lawfully issued congressional subpoenas. Why? Because they wanted to hide. They wanted to conceal evidence that was deeply damaging and incriminating of Donald Trump. They wanted to conceal it from Congress and by extension from we the people. So they blew off 
two subpoenas each, one for documents, one for testimony. They both were indicted. They both went to trial. They both were convicted on both counts. They both were sentenced to four months in prison. But because a Trump appointed judge, Carl Nichols, presided over Bannon's prosecution, Bannon is still out and about and saying the kind of things that continue to undermine our democracy and confidence in our elections. He was convicted back in October 2022, and he has yet to have one minute of accountability. Visit him because Trump appointed Judge Carl Nichols decided to leave Steve Bannon out in the community, footloose and fancy free, while he appeals his conviction. And that will take goodness knows how long same charges, same conviction, same sentence, four months for Peter Navarro and a non-Trump appointed judge just ordered Peter Navarro to report to the Federal Bureau of Prisons to begin serving his four month sentence. What a difference a judge makes. Second point I wanna make friends. Now these convictions of both Bannon and Navarro are not convictions for what they did on and around January 6th or the run-up to January 6th to try to overturn a presidential election, to try to stop the peaceful transfer of presidential power, to try to override and overturn the expressed will of the American voters. No, that's not what they were indicted for. They were indicted, convicted, and sentenced for defying lawful congressional subpoenas, contempt of Congress. They have yet to be held accountable for anything they did in the run-up to January 6th to assist Donald Trump in trying to unlawfully and unconstitutionally retain the power of the presidency. But I still believe, friends, and I hope not naively, that the day is coming where they will be held accountable for those crimes. Remember in the Trump indictment that Jack Smith handed down in Washington, D.C. for trying to overturn the election? There were six co-conspirators who were not, um, were not indicted. They were kind of identified in substance. Now, they weren't Bannon and Navarro. They were other, others like Giuliani and um, Jeffrey Clark, the corrupt DOJ official, and um, uh, Sidney Powell and Mark Meadows and John Eastman. Um, but I don't think those are the only people who are probably next up for indictment. I think there are more. So we'll have to stay tuned for possible future indictments for guys like Navarro, Bannon, and others. Okay, friends, legal development number two. There he goes again. Donald Trump just can't quit defaming E. Jean Carroll. This from the New York Times, headline, E. Jean Carroll could sue Trump again over new attacks, lawyer suggests. And that article begins, just days after Donald Trump posted a $91.6 million bond in the defamation case he lost recently to the writer E. Jean Carroll, her lawyer on Monday suggested she was considering filing a third defamation lawsuit against the former president. The lawyer raised the prospect of a new lawsuit after Mr. Trump, in recent days, repeatedly lashed out at Ms. Carroll, using the same kind of disparaging language that led to the huge judgment against him in January. This quote from Ms. Carroll's lawyer, quote, the statute of limitations for defamation in most jurisdictions is between one and three years, Roberta Kaplan, Ms. Carroll's lawyer, said in a statement Monday morning. As we said after the last jury verdict, we continue to monitor every statement that Donald Trump makes about our client. In a separate court filing, Ms. Kaplan told the federal judge overseeing the case that she and Mr. Trump's lawyers had reached an agreement on the details of his proposed $91.6 million bond. So it's good that Ms. Carroll and her lawyers are satisfied that the bond Donald Trump intends to post will protect Ms. Carroll's interests. And we'll just have to stay tuned to see if Ms. Carroll 
decides to sue Donald Trump a third time. And frankly, winning that case wouldn't be a heavy lift. Let's finish up with the third story. And friends, this one is not so much a legal development, but it's just too good not to talk about. Did you see the end of the Oscars when the host Jimmy Kimmel came out and said, you know, I think we have about one minute left. So what I'd like to do is read you a review of my performance hosting the ceremony that that just came in. And then what Kimmel did was read a little bit of what Donald Trump posted during the course of Oscar night. Has there ever been a worse host than Jimmy Kimmel at the Oscars? His opening was that of a less than average person trying too hard to be something which he is not and never can be. What a wordsmith that Donald Trump. Get rid of Kimmel and perhaps replace him with another washed up but cheap ABC talent, George Slopinopoulos. He would make everybody on the stage look bigger, stronger, and more glamorous. And Jimmy Kimmel then summarized the rest of Trump's post by saying, blah, 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 make America great again. And then Jimmy Kimmel quipped, thank you, President Trump. Thank you for watching. I'm surprised you're still up. Isn't it past your jail time? So I'm going to go out on a limb and say Jimmy Kimmel got the better of that exchange. And no, it's not exactly a legal development, but, you know, friends, we have to find ways to laugh. You know, finding humor amidst all the darkness, you know, like justice, matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.